So that's a little bit about what's going on at Holy Trinity Lutheran School, and we thank you for your support of the school. It is a, a very large mission of the, this congregation, and what a wonderful opportunity to be able to bring the gospel of Christ to people that are coming through our doors almost every single day. Uh, we have a big event happening next week, and I'm looking for, where's Dylan? Where did he, oh, you're right there. Okay. Dylan, come on down. Tell us all about Shine On. I see yes. a few people wearing their shirts. I know, and I forgot my shirt this morning, unfortunately. Hi, guys. My name is Dylan Crawford, and I'm here to talk to you for a second about Shine On. It is our one-day service event on Saturday, May 4th, this upcoming Saturday, where we are going into the community, and we will be serving in outreach. So we will be doing various community service projects. We, would be, we could be landscaping. Um, some people need their yards mowed. Um, a few people need meals delivered. We have people helping at the regional food bank. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can help serve us this Saturday. It starts at 7.30, and we'll serve you breakfast. We'll have a little bit of a worship service, go out into the community and serve, and then come back at the end of the day um, to wrap up and discuss what happened um, at the end of the day. So we'd love for you to be a part of it. We have sign-up um, sign sheets in the narthex. You can sign up online at holytrinity.org slash shine on. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, holytrinityedmond.org. Uh, slash shine on and you can sign up there you can talk to one of us you can show up the day of it's just good to know in advance if you're coming so that way we can plan accordingly uh, including meals and such so that's a wonderful way that you can uh, witness in the community speaking of witnessing that's our new sermon series that we've got we are witnesses and with that I'm excited that we have you know we've been doing these devotional booklets uh, for since January of last year and this year we have uh, an army of authors from the congregation, some of you who have written devotionals for this booklet. And so they are showing this is how we are witnesses. They're writing devotionals for you. So on your way out, be sure to grab a devotional booklet and hear how God is working in the lives of some of your fellow congregation members. Also, as you leave today, if you, uh, I guess, sponsored one of our lilies, be sure to grab one. Otherwise, uh, Lisa's probably going to throw them out. Um, she just doesn't like flowers. Just kidding. No, uh, <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. She loves flowers. Uh, so give them to her. Um, at any rate, so if, if you uh, sponsored a, a lily, be sure to grab one. Pastor Hinky is uh, doing Council of Presidents stuff uh, right now and throughout this week. He will return at the end of the week. And 
this Wednesday, we will be finding out who our uh, next vicar will be, as well as we'll figure out where uh, Alex LeHue, our former vicar, will be sent on his first call as well. So you can tune into csl.edu and I probably slash call day, I think is what it is. Uh, so that would be, we'll probably post something later this week for you to find the link if you want to watch that service and find out. Also that's coming up is our voters assembly meeting. This is a, a lot of things happening, folks. We'll, next week at our voters assembly meeting, it's our annual budget meeting. And so we'll discuss the budget as well as a few other calls. So it's uh, unfortunate in some ways, but it's all right because the Lord of the church is still the Lord of the church. Our call that we extended to our associate pastor, uh, Pastor Robert Walston in St. Louis, he has declined the call. Uh, they felt reaffirmed that they were where God wants them to be right now. They're not finished in St. Louis, and that's okay. Uh, so the call committee has gone together. We've got some more uh, folks to consider, and so we will present those at the call meeting. We thought we need to take this opportunity while we have a scheduled call meeting rather than try to get people together during the summer because that could be impossible. So uh, voters assembly next week. You can find out more about the call and some of the information that's happening at the back of the bulletin. Don't read it now. You can read it later. Take it with you. Uh, with that, the bell has called us to worship. So let us uh, prepare our hearts to worship our Lord and to hear his word and receive his gifts of forgiveness. And we do that in a time of confession and absolution. You are invited to kneel or you may remain seated. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you by our thoughts, words, and actions, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. In spite of what we know about you and all that you provide for us, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed as your witnesses of your power. You have united us with others in the body of Christ, yet we too often fail to love one another. We have failed as your witnesses of your love. You have called us to go out into the world to make disciples, but we neglect opportunities of speaking your gospel message or serving those around us in need. We have failed as your witnesses testifying of your truth. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us by your Holy Spirit, so that we may delight in doing your will and in walking in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God our Heavenly Father has heard our cries for mercy, and for your sake and mine he sent forth a Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord, his only Son. And so as a called and ordained servant of the word, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand for our call to worship. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh God, let us worship you. Alleluia. God bless your worship here today.
open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in His hand. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His for He made his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace live as your witnesses, confessing in our life and conversations that Jesus is Lord, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our children's lesson hymn. This is a first, guys, and I'm so excited about it. This is the first time I've had people line up so well just right here in front where I don't have to, like, look and make sure that somebody's not hiding behind the rail on this side or that one. I can see everybody, so thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. We're going to be talking this morning about a very big W word. It's on the front of the bulletins. It'll be up on the screens. It's here on the devotions. This is the word witnesses. Do any of you guys know what that word means? What does it mean? to be a witness. Ha. Huh. You don't know. I get to tell you then. That's awesome. Okay. So a witness is somebody who sees something and then says something. Like if you were in the bank 
and a guy comes in and he robs the bank, you would look and you would see what he was wearing and you might tell them what he said. And if you see something, you say something. Like if there was a fire in the side of the church, if the wall was on fire, you would see the fire and you would say something like, get out, there's a big fire. Or if there was a snow cone truck in front of the church, you might see the snow cone truck and say to your mom and dad, hey, can we go get snow cones? They're right up there. So to be a witness is to see something and to say something. That's what a witness is. A witness sees something and says something. You guys are all smiling. I even hear laughs back there. Nobody here is laughing, but uh, maybe this is... Oh, I just heard a chuckle now, too. What? What's going on? Oh, wait. Look behind me. There's something. You see something and you're saying something? Oh my, oh goodness. Hi, good morning. How are you, Pastor? I'm wonderful. Good to you? see you. Good to see you too. So you guys were seeing him the entire time? Yeah. And you just were letting me talk? You were just letting, you didn't say something? He was there the entire time? Well, it's, it's a great treat to have Pastor up for children's message. He, he doesn't come up usually when I'm giving children's message. Glad to see you. And you too. Glad you're here. Hey, you want to go back to your seat and like, fix you. your hair? Yeah. yeah. You, don't, you, look, you don't like my hair? You look good. Oh. You look good. Yeah, it's a, it's. After the beard, it's a whole new look for you. Yeah. 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 So you guys were letting me just talk and you didn't say something. You guys witnessed that pastor had come and sat right behind me and he was wearing his big funny gloves and his funny wig and the whole bit. When you see something, you say something because we saw something last week. What happened here last week? Hmm. Anybody remember? Nobody? How about what happened? Easter, thank you. Easter happened here last week. And so there's a whole world out there who didn't see what was happening. They're like me with a back to Pastor Meyer, and he didn't get to see all the funny things that were happening. You guys saw it. You were here for Easter. You're here today as we continue to celebrate Easter. And you know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, but he didn't stay dead. On Easter, he comes back to life. You know that. So you see. Thing. As his witnesses, we now get to share that with everybody else. Us who've seen it need to make sure the rest of the world doesn't go on ignoring the great thing that's happening right in front of them. I would have never known about Pastor Meyer behind me if you hadn't told me to turn around and look. And the rest of this world is never going to hear news about Jesus unless people who have seen him say what they've seen. Can we pray together? Dear God in heaven, we thank you for Easter and for the fact that Jesus is alive. We ask you to make us witnesses, people who share the great things we've seen and the great things we've heard with people who don't know Jesus. Make us bold, make us brave. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seats.
readings appointed for the second Sunday of Easter. The first reading is found in selected verses from Acts chapter 5. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We have strictly charged you not to teach in this, this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as a leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. And the second reading is selected verses from the book of Revelations, chapter 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us, and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and is to come, the Almighty. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living room. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh. We stand. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor to his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them who sleep. Give to the Lord all glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor to his name. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Hallelujah. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Blessed are those who have not seen and have Hallelujah. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, Jesus showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Hallelujah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As God's people with a message to share to the world, we confess our faith, the God in whom we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. You may be seated for our message hymn.
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. If you get nothing else out of this sermon this morning, please hear this. It is still Easter. We still have the white claws and all of the flowers and everything else. It is still Easter. The tomb is still empty. Our Savior is still victorious. Sin and death are still defeated. Jesus is still alive, and Christ is risen. He is risen. Oh, glad we're on the same page. That's awesome. Uh, as we continue as Christian people to celebrate Easter for this next six weeks, we are witnesses to this resurrection, the celebration that happened this week that we recreate with our celebration this Sunday. We're going to continue to see how Christ's victory on Easter reshapes everything, how we reflect on our past, what we do in the present, what we hope for in the future. Christ's resurrection fundamentally gives us a new benchmark for what's possible in Christ. And it's really gonna take six weeks, at least six weeks, to come to grips with all of that. And so that's why we're starting this new sermon series, We Are Witnesses. That's a quote that's lifted straight out of the uh, first reading from Acts that Fred shared with us this morning. The apostles who have saw, seen the risen Jesus declare, we are witnesses. And it's this identity that they are witnesses of Jesus, that they are witnesses for Jesus that propels the story of the entire book of Acts. And that's where we're going to spend our time for the next six weeks in the book of Acts with the story of real life believers like you, like me, who are forced to reevaluate what their life is all about in the light of the new life that's given to them by the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Great God in heaven, I pray for me for us, that Easter would be alive in our hearts, that Jesus' victory would be just as real, just as tangible, just as joyous today as it was last Sunday. Allow the power of his resurrection to penetrate our hearts, that our hopes, our ambitions, our ideas of what it means to be a Christian might be made new in light of him who died, but who lives forevermore. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so our reading today takes us to prison, two prisons actually, but more on that in a moment. The reading today uh, from our book of Acts takes us to prison, and this prison is in the city of Jerusalem. It's populated by Peter, John, and the rest of Jesus' closest disciples, and it's no accident that they're in prison. They know exactly what put them there. The apostles have been locked up because they have defiantly been proclaiming Easter to the people, or as they put it, the God of our fathers raised Jesus, who you killed by hanging him on a tree. Their message includes Good Friday, the hanging him on a tree part, but they lead with the good news of Easter, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. And this message is catching on. This is all happening in the earliest days of the church. The disciples are proclaiming this message to a non-Christian world. And here come these witnesses, those who have seen and heard the resurrected Jesus. And now they're attempting to turn this unbelieving world upside down with the message of the one who was dead, but who lives forevermore. The message of the one who was crucified for the sins of the world, yet lives to proclaim that forgiveness to all who would believe. And they do. They do believe. More than ever, believers were added to the Lord. They follow the disciples all around town. They're expecting miracles, expecting that Jesus, who conquered even the grave, could conquer their enemies of sickness and spiritual darkness because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Keep that one in your pocket. You'll need it later. And it's this message, the message that we just all shared together, this Easter message that he is truly risen, that the world around them is trying to stomp out. So the disciples are rounded up and thrown into jail. Some of them as repeat 
offenders. If you're reading through the book of Acts and get to the chapter before, Acts chapter 4, you find scripture says Peter and John, just the two of them, were arrested, quote, because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Before they're let go, the disciples are specifically ordered to knock it off with this Easter stuff, but they answer, we can't help but speak about what we've seen and what we've heard. They're witnesses, not just in what they see, but in what they say. What they've seen with their eyes, they now share with their mouths. For them to do anything else, they say, would be impossible. And that's why they find themselves back in this same situation again, because they haven't stopped. They can't be quiet, and so they find themselves back in the slammer. I've been to prison, too, multiple times, as have a lot of my former co-workers. It's a hot spot for people in the news business. It's where the news often happens. I've been there as people go to jail. I've been there as people get let out of jail. But I've never had the true inmate experience of seeing prison from the inside, of seeing what it does to you when you've been locked up day after day or month after month or year after year. But psychologists have watched how people's personalities change. The longer you're locked up, the more isolated and socially withdrawn you become. You refuse to share with others out of fear that what you share will be exploited and used against you. Your emotions become attached, cold and hard to the situations around you, and empathy for others becomes next to impossible. Researchers say that often those who are released from prison aren't ready for it. They've spent so much time shutting themselves off from the rest of the world, and now they're expected to instantly reintegrate into society. The freedom they've wanted so badly turns out to be a reality that they're not prepared to accept. And that's how I picture the disciples in our gospel reading, not the book of Acts, but when we meet them in prison on Easter. Peter and John have been to the tomb. They've heard the announcement that Jesus is alive. What do they do? They retreat to their own personal prison, a locked room, sequestered from the outside world, where fear has become their jailer. They allow fear to rob them of their freedom. And it's here, in this locked room, this prison of their own making, that Jesus performs an Easter jailbreak. He's not willing to leave them locked up and isolated. Jesus will not allow them to withdraw from the world, so he comes out of nowhere. He sees their imprisonment in their own fear and deals with their most immediate need. To his friends held captive by their fear, he speaks peace. Peace be with you. And in the original Greek, that you is plural, so peace be with all y'all. On the day of his resurrection victory, Jesus proclaims an end to his disciples' fear, the fear that keeps his friends in isolation, that walls them off from the rest of the world. And then to make sure that they know that the prison door has been blown wide open, Jesus repeats himself, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. You aren't meant to stay here. Go. You're free. I picture one of those animal movies, and this will tell you my age, like White Fang or Free Willy, where a kid has been bonding with this wild animal. And it gets to the scene where the animal has to leave his human friends and rejoin God's great creation, and there's usually a line in there, something like, Go on now, get. <laughs> and this is Jesus on Easter evening addressing the disciples he's loved and nurtured. And he says, I'm sending you. Now go. God's great creation is waiting for you. But like the animals in those movies, or like an inmate who's getting his first breath of freedom outside of jail, you get the idea that the disciples 
don't really know what to do with this newfound freedom. They go, but at first they only go as far as their friends. John records that he and his fellow disciples went and found their buddy Thomas, and they told him the Easter message that Jesus is alive. But a whole week after Easter, the equivalent of today, the disciples are back in their locked room. They've once again made fear their jailer, and they've returned to the prison that they find all too comfortable at this point. And once again, to hearts caged by worry and anxiety, Jesus comes and speaks peace. The Messiah who orchestrated his own prison break from the grave has returned to deliver the spoils of his victory. No locked door is going to stop the Savior who brings them freedom and life. And once again, he sets them free with a purpose. As those who have witnessed the risen Christ with their very eyes, who have touched the holes in his hands, who have put their hands in his side, who have been set free from their self-imposed prisons of fear, they're sent with one very important, one very simple mission. Share Easter with the world. And it's that mission that gets them thrown into prison over and over and over in the book of Acts. But I get the feeling, at least by chapter 5, that they don't expect to be there very long. You know, they've seen that their God has a track record with locked doors. So in the middle of the night, the prison gates swing wide open. The apostles are set free, just as they were when Jesus showed up on Easter evening to proclaim his peace, set free and sent with the message of the gospel. And they get right back to work. By sunrise, they are teaching in the temple. The authorities are beside themselves. Aren't these guys supposed to be in jail? They want answers, and they haul the apostles in for interrogation who keeps setting you free? Jesus. The one you killed by hanging him on a tree. But he is risen. He is risen oh. Their witness means that their Savior and mine has risen and is living to give repentance and the forgiveness of sins. We are his witnesses, they say. And we must obey God rather than men. In front of their jailers, face to, the, face to face with the people who would lock them up just for the words they say, they share Easter. They proclaim what they've seen and heard because it's more than their job. It's their identity. They are witnesses. They can't be quiet. And this book is the proof. They can't be quiet, and the record of their bravery and boldness is preserved for us in Scripture. They can't be quiet. And even today, the witness of these first generation of believers shouts to us, We have seen the living Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh. Their witness means we are met with that same good news of Easter. The good news of Easter we can repeat together as God's people, that Jesus is alive. The sin you brought with you, to this place this morning is gone. His, cr his cross has crushed sin. His death and his resurrection have destroyed your death. And he sets you free to be a witness to his victory. So where does that news find you this morning? Does it find you already brimming with Easter joy, like the disciples in the book of Acts, ready for us to throw open those doors so you can run out of here and share the good news with anybody you meet, no matter the consequences? Or does that news meet you a little like those same disciples on Easter evening? Witnesses to the resurrection, but more content to stay behind closed doors held captive by worry, imprisoned by intimidation. Here we've been set free from sin and death, only to lock ourselves back up in doubt and fear. And just like anyone in prison, the longer we spend locked up, the more isolated we become. The longer we spend in the prison of fear, that we find too comfortable, 
the less likely we are to ever share our faith with somebody else. We can be scared of putting ourselves out there, of risking embarrassment. We think about sharing Jesus, but then we play the conversation in our head and there's really no way to do it without them feeling awkward or us feeling awkward. And so we just say nothing. But what kind of a witness is that? Jesus makes no small effort to show that sharing your faith, sharing Jesus is essential to calling yourself a Christian. In the span of one week in Jesus' life, Jesus is, declares that people, human beings, were created for the purpose of proclaiming him as Lord and Savior. And if they fail to do the job, the rocks will do it for him. That same week, he tells a parable where a totally undeserving guy is given a seat at the richest uh, wedding feast possible. And then he's thrown out. Because when confronted with the generosity of the host, he has nothing to say. And then on Easter morning, Jesus meets the women at the tomb and says, go and tell. This telling is not a small part of what it means to be Christian. It's huge. It's why Jesus keeps repeating it. It's why the apostles keep repeating it. We are witnesses, not just witnesses who see, but witnesses who say who share the great things God has done in our lives, who share the story of Easter and make it clear that Jesus' victory marked by the empty tomb is for all people because they're ready to hear it. An American evangelism study found almost 75% of people will say yes when someone they know asks, will you come with me to church? Now, the with me part is important. The with me part means that they're not going to be alone. They're not going to be wandering around. They're not going to make it to the wrong spot. They're going to be with someone they know doing something they know is important to them. Wouldn't it be incredible if our church, if every church was known for having a culture of inviting, that we simply expected that our friends were bringing new people here on a regular basis to experience all the awesome things that happen here at Holy Trinity. But this is not the only place where the gospel happens right now. In each of your lives, God is unlocking the doors to spiritual conversations that only you are positioned to have, giving you unique opportunities to be his witness in the lives he surrounded you with. There's someone in your office, someone on your street, someone in your family, someone in your Facebook friends list who hasn't ever had someone share with them the good news of Jesus. Research from last summer found that one out of three people who considers themselves non-Christian or a lapsed Christian, one out of three of those people have never in their lives had anyone share Jesus with them. How can we worry about our comfort, our embarrassment, our awkwardness, when no one has bothered to bring Jesus to one-third of the non-Christians in our very own country. And he makes it so simple. He says, just share what you've seen and heard. Hey, have you heard this song? It's really cool. We should listen to it together, and maybe we can talk about it over coffee. Hey, God is doing a great thing in my life, and I have to share it with somebody, and you're the lucky one. How's your mom doing? Would it be okay if we prayed for her together right now? I know it hurts. And Jesus knows it too. And he loves you. And he's always here for you. And so am I. Jesus has defeated sin and death and the devil. Have faith, people of God, witnesses of Christ, that he will defeat your fear and your awkwardness and your embarrassment, that you have nothing that can stand in his way, that he opened the door to the grave and he opens those doors for you too, to be witnesses 
for a world that is waiting for someone to share with them what they've seen and what they've heard. Because it's not just our job, it's who we are. It's our identity. We are witnesses, and we can't be quiet. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. We sing together. Mission focus of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League is the LCMS Jail Ministry Training, $36,500. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Christ came to proclaim good news to the poor and proclaim freedom for prisoners. By his death and resurrection, we have been released from the jail of sin and pardoned from our death sins. Through LCMS jail ministry chaplains and volunteers, this freedom is being proclaimed to incarcerated people throughout the United States. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. The United States has the highest incarceration rate in the creating an ever-growing and uniquely needed ministry. Men and women in prison need word and sacrament through jail ministry chaplains, but they also need assistance from re-entering the community. A $36,500 LWML mission grant provided the funding for a synod-wide prison and jail ministry conference in 2018, allowing 150 volunteers to learn prison ministry basics. Participants were given training and resources to help spread the love and saving grace of Jesus throughout our prison system. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison.
as we continue to celebrate Christ's resurrection, let us also pray for those held captive, physically and spiritually, by sin. May the ministry of prison chaplains and volunteers bring resurrection power and transformation into the jails and prisons of the United States. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for freeing us from the prison of our sin through Jesus' death and resurrection. Empower the jail ministry chaplains and volunteers to proclaim this freedom to the prisoners they need. Through your word, enable each prisoner to see the hope that is found only in Christ Jesus. Fill us with your love so that we can help those who are trying to start a new life after time in prison. We desire to proclaim freedom to captives in our communities. Help us for Jesus' sake. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand and share the Lord's peace with one another as you bring forward your offerings to the offering plates and your mites to the mite box. Let us at this time come before our Lord with our prayers of intercession. You may kneel or remain seated as you are as we continue with our Kyrie. for all the baptized people of God in Christ Jesus and for all others according to their needs in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we worship you and adore you because you have raised your Son from the dead and made him to be Lord over all things in heaven and on earth. Fill us with confidence with each new day so that as we encounter threats, fears, even death itself, we may not lose hope but always fix our eyes on the resurrected Jesus. Like Thomas, we sometimes long for some sort of proof, like touching Jesus himself. In the face of such doubtings or struggles, remind us that we are a people blessed for believing, not for seeing. Yet by faith, help us be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world that others would see and know him and believe through us and our witness as we go out as your witnesses in the world. Fill us with your spirit that we would be filled with your praise and never ashamed of your, go your saving gospel message. Lord, in your mercy... O oh Lord of the Church, we praise you for answering our prayers, even if it was not the answer we desired. As we have heard the news of Pastor Walston and his family declining the divine call extended to him, we rejoice that you have allowed us to be part of the process of encouragement for him, reaffirming to him the pre-existing call at Christ Memorial in St. Louis. As we look ahead at our own upcoming Voters' Assembly meeting next week, we pray your blessing upon all who gather and for the calls to be considered at that time. As we seek to carry out your mission entrusted to us in making disciples, lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit, that we would continually live lives of love for you, love for one another, 
and love for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Lord of life, we pray for those celebrating birthdays this week among us. Kathy Miller, Drew Terrell, Royce Bartlett, Jordan Hoven, Denise Howard, Haley Dewitt, Daxon Hedrick, Lane Hill, James Lawson, Isaiah Newkirk, Darren Winkler, Drew Bales, John Payne, Aiden Elderton, Savannah Hitzman, Matthew McCain, Trevor Sheever, and Matthew Trowbridge. You have called them in baptism to be your children, disciples of Christ, and witnesses of your love in the world. So let them continue to experience your blessings, and may they be a blessing through every aspect of their earthly life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, we pray for those celebrating marriage blessings this week as they mark their anniversaries. Jake and Kim Barnhart, Curtis and Rena Vickery, Greg and Barbara Regans, Chad and Michelle Smith, and Leo and Mike Lee Williams. Let their love grow stronger for you and for one another through every joy and sorrow experienced until that day when one shall lay the other into your arms for eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Great physician of body and soul, embrace with your mercy those in need of your healing and comfort. Keith Onnes, Dick Anderson, Cindy Dalkey, Mark Fuller, Mindy Folsbach, Paul Whitbrot, Carol Garner, Susan Hinkey, Verna Holtzen, Philip Isett, Georgette Yercheski, Howard Kirsten, Chad Longauger, Marianne Lees, Kirby Marino, Greg and Marta McCain, Iva Ormson, Rita Paul, Rose Renner, Bob Schatz, Ron and Brenda Schlesinger, Howard Stockstill, Kylie Young, and all others on our prayer list and in our hearts. You know their needs, O Lord, and so we pray your healing would attend them according to their need of body, soul, or mind. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, we lift up to you all those mourning the loss of a loved one, but especially do we remember and grieve for our Christian brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka who were targeted and killed in brutal terror attacks as they gathered for worship on Easter Sunday last week. Put an end to such violence, O Lord, and do not let this violence from enemies be met with more violence through vigilante justice or revenge. Rather, let all your church continue to witness through words and actions of love and even forgiveness for our enemies. In the midst of persecution, let your people stand firm in their faith. In the midst of all grief, direct all to see Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as we sing. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And we are witnesses to these things. Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. By faith, they are witnesses of the risen Christ. The Lord has said, Go and speak to the people all the words of this life. To God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in his holy church forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Christ died, Christ is risen, Christ shall come again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in God's peace and don't keep quiet.